What's going on guys, Patrick's here. Today we're going to be continuing our lessons on understanding curves, by this time utilizing Onshape in order to trace a sketch or picture onto an object. So the first thing we're going to do is we can either utilize the plate that we used in the previous exercise, which is def defining a conic feature, or we can actually utilize theirs. So we're going to open up theirs just so you guys can see what it looks like. It's a little bit different because it's yellow. So we're going to open this up. I'm going to drag this over to our other tab just so we have our notes in front of us. And then we can continue after making a copy. Remember when you go to make a copy, just make sure to throw your first initial last name into the front unless you have your own organization system that you wish to utilize. I just like to attach this for the sake of turning in documentation to other people. Okay, perfect. So the next step, we're going to create a sketch onto the flat section down here. So we're going to click on here and create a sketch. Remember to rotate to the top view so you can work directly inside it. And next thing we're going to do is select an insert an image. So what we're going to do is right at the top here where you can see this symbol, which is inserted DFG or DWG. This is actually an AutoCAD file. The, the DWG specifically is an AutoCAD file, so you can introduce drawings that you create in CAD in AutoCAD into this actual documentation for 3D interpretation. We can also insert images. So this is something to keep in mind is that you can insert whatever images you want and end up tracing on top of them. So one thing that we're going to do here is we're going to trace the Onshape logo onto this plate. So we click the Onshape logo. We're going to actually insert it as a rectangle. So right here, it says we're going to add a, uh, while we're placing it, let's double check that. Uh, then sketch the corner rectangle as prompted. So we're just going to create a rectangle and we're going to adjust the shape of it afterwards with dimensioning and snapping it to certain points. So I'm just going to drop it in there. So we're going to dimension the width as uh, 2.5 inches. So I'm going to click on the width here. We're going to go from edge to edge. So you can click on the construction lines that we have here. And we're going to adjust this 2.5 inches. But you can see here it made the logo bigger in order to adjust and accommodate for the size. Then we're going to add a midpoint constraint between the top construction line and the origin. So if we look around for the origin, uh, let's actually add the origin back in. Ooh. Rotate this around the other way. Okay, let's reveal the origin. So we can see it right there, there's our origin. And we are gonna select a midpoint constraint, midpoint, top line, origin, there you go. So by doing that, it, snap, it makes the origin one of the midpoints of the top line, therefore lining up everything to the center of this object. Once we're done here, we can hit the check mark and we're good to go there. So next we're gonna create a new sketch on the face, which is, uh, on the same face as the picture. So we see the picture here, but we're gonna to have to create a new sketch on the same plane, and we're going to start tracing. So we're gonna call this, get this, trace. Next thing is we're gonna start tracing these letters individually. So in order to do that, we're gonna utilize up here what is called the spline tool. So we're going to begin by tracing the two uh, with two closed splines. So one around the complete outside, one on the inside. So splines are just basically squiggly lines, <laughs> as I refer to them as. So we select a starting point. Right here. And we're just going to start tracing around by clicking points that are contained within this line. Now, this might not be the greatest thing in the world. Uh, it won't be perfect, for sure. But at the very least, you get something very close to it. Believe it or not, this is some people's jobs to trace logos like this so they can get set up for CAD drawings and 3D print stuff and all that. So, And clearly, it's not my job because that was terrible. But you get the idea. Another good method that you can add to this is 
as they mentioned at the bottom here, here's a good hint, is you can utilize something like construction lines. So if I was to restart this, his splines are all one line. What I'm going to do here is create a horizontal construction line. And we're also going to create a vertical construction line. Just to give us some kind of symmetry for our actual object. So this will help us out a little bit. So we're going to click on this section, and we're going to start creating our trace again. So this way it gives us like a snap point towards the end of it, so I feel like I'm getting it like a little too close. There we go. Zoom in right there. So again, we're looking to try to maximize those curves without like getting too caught up in like how many little points you can go. If you wanted to be incredibly and finely detailed, then you can get like really up in there. But a wise man once told me, can't see it from my house. So in this case, just for the sake of the demonstration, we don't have to worry about too much about those intimate detailings. But if we wanted to get as close as possible, we certainly could. And you can obviously see that there. That was a lot better. All right, let's try it again. But this time we're going to do it on the inside. So we're going to start with the spline again. And we're going to wrap around the outside of our image here. Utilizing, again, those snap points from the lines just to give us a nice solid stopping point. And we went a little low on that last one. But again, quite all right for the demonstration. If you want to be a perfectionist, I'm not going to stop you. But again, this is for the sake of a demonstration. So we ain't perfect, but it is what it is. Can't see it from my house. OK, so we're going to continue with these, uh, utilizing the constraints as much as possible. So. Something like a tangent constraint, for example, is just to make sure that thing, strange things don't happen with the intersections. But we're also going to be looking at different things that we're actually going to utilize. But what I'm going to do is leave this to you guys. This will end up being go back, trace, 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 utilize different aspects of the tracing in order to get the exact shapes. But really, it ultimately comes down to you're just trying to trace certain objects. Finish by completing the E. Then once the sketch is complete, what we'll actually do is we will just simply extrude. So I'll demonstrate what this looks like with the O. For the sake of this completing the assignment, you will have to actually finish the whole shape and then etch it into it. But I just want to show you to make the video short and sweet because you guys listening to me walking through and tracing this is not actually helpful. So to keep it short and sweet, let's take a look at this. We have our trace plane right there. I'm going to hide the original image. So that way I can see my O, that's all that's left over. And we are going to do an extrusion. I'm going to go and extrude cut, so I can cut into the actual shape. As you can see, I went a little too deep there. So what we're going to do is change our depth to instead of one whole inch, we're going to do 0 0.01 instead. And you can see right there, I just cut an O into my figure. So look, there's a nice O right there. And you would do this for the rest of the on shape logo so you create the entire on shape logo and do the rest of the cuts throughout it remember it doesn't have to look perfect you like to see i have blemishes and there are mistakes into it but from a distance it's actually really hard to tell if you're not looking for it like yeah that looks like an o that's an o you can't see this little i see this little divot right here but it's totally okay it's a, a complete trace job if you're worried about those little details like that then you would go back in you make those adjustments to the spline accordingly and you can always add more dots in order to add more layers of detail, or you can go back and take it a little bit slower all the way around. So again, you should have the completed on shape logo once this is done. And I hope you found this tutorial useful. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube. Or if you're in one of my classes, you can feel free as well to message me on Remind or leave a comment under this assignment on Google Classroom. Thanks and have a good day.